A lot of my artwork centers on looking at natural phenomena and maybe translating it, I sometimes say regurgitating science and technology into artworks. Um, For Wavefield, it is a, I don't want to say it's a recreation, but it's sort of based on a simple water wave or how a water wave forms and flows. It is the third and the last and the largest of a series. I tend to, in art, often work in sort of two to three part series. And with this one, it started with an exploration that started in 1993 with um, the first wave field, 100 feet by 100 feet, 10,000 square feet. The waves are based on an, a photographic still f- uh, image of a naturally occurring water wave called a Stokes wave. And, and what um, are they made out of? They're made out of earth and grass. All three are earth and grass waves. A lot of times my outdoor works are based solely with the earth. And um, in that one, each wave was about three feet high, four feet high. Human scaled, you could sit in, curl up in a pocket of a wave and read a book. It's at a University of Michigan campus, the North Campus. The second one, I tripled the scale to 30,000 square feet. It's for a federal courthouse building, GSA, in Miami. And um, it is a shallow wave. It's called flutter, and it's when water moves over the sand right before it hits the land, and it's the shallow ripples. So again, very, very low waveforms, about one foot, two foot high, which I think made the um, security guards really happy because um, they're just really cautious down there, so they wanted something very low. And I wanted to end the series with something where, what if you could pull the waves up over your head? What if you could make it so that as you walk through a wave field, you actually got a little lost and in the, the way that you, walking through some of the Richard Serra sculptures will a, feel? A little bit. And I think it the waves rise up to about, I would say, 15 to 18 feet in height. Wow. It's 11 acres. It's a complete reclamation of a gravel pit. So we worked with the State Department of Environmental Protection on this one. I was pretty proud of that. And um, it changes scale drastically. So one overview is when you look down on it, you've crossed through Gold's Ruthie's Wall. And you're just looking down, and you could see the whole thing, and it actually looks very large. And then as you go through it, it changes from being extremely intimate, where you can actually see as one wave rolls down into the next, that literally you can see and connect to the next wave. And then as a wave rises up, you lose and you're caught between a wave. In some ways, part of my architecture is a little bit more inspired by, one could say, the Japanese aesthetic, where the architecture forms the frame in which you view the land. And there's different ways, both in that sense are very much, um, I would say, attuned to the environment, but in very, very different ways.